Hello guys, welcome to Physics Grad. This is the fourth lecture on the Legender Transform and in this video we are going to work out some examples and note down some important remarks so that we understand the Legender Transform better. Alright, so let's begin. So our first example is going to be f of x equal to e power x. Okay, what we immediately notice, so let me just plot it for completeness f of x x this looks something like this okay it intersects this axis at 1 so f double dash of x is also equal to e power x this is well known which is always greater than or equal to 0 therefore f of x is convex is convex now what is f star of p which is the legendary transform so this is equal to maximizing with respect to x the function px minus f of x okay this implies d by dx of px minus f of x is equal to 0 which implies p minus f dash of x equal to 0 which means p equal to f dash of x and because this is uh, because this is a convex function f dash of x is going to be monotonously increasing which means f dash inverse will exist which means x will be equal to f dash inverse of p okay so what is f dash inverse so f dash of x is equal to e power x okay let's call this y then the inverse of a function is such that x should be equal to f dash inverse of y so this would imply that x equal to ln y which means f dash inverse of some variable p will be equal to ln p okay and for this function to have a maximum maximum p should be equal to f dash of x or in other words x should be equal to f dash inverse of p so wherever there is x here replace it with f dash inverse of p and we will get f star of p which is a legendary transform of f of x equal to p into x x is equal to uh, ln p p ln p minus f of ln p this is p ln p minus e power ln p which is p ln p minus p this is p into ln p minus 1 if i plot this okay let's say side by side here f uh, sorry f star of p versus p it will look something like this okay you can try it out if you plot it and we see that this is also a convex function which was our first property that we discussed in the previous example and we are not going to take the legendary transform of this again it will just be tedious but in the next example for a simpler case we will also verify the second property which is the involution property okay so let's take another example f of x equal to some c x square then f star of x again this is a convex function because it's a positive parabola so this will be equal to oh, sorry f star of p will be equal to maximizing x with respect to the function uh, p x minus f of x this would imply again x equal to f dash inverse of p right but f dash is equal to 2x which means f dash inverse of p will be equal to some p by 2 okay why because if f dash of y equal to 2x this implies x is equal to some uh, x is equal to y by 2 which means f dash inverse of y is equal to y by 2 okay 
and therefore f dash inverse of p is equal to p by 2 which implies f star of p is equal to p into p by 2 minus f of x that is f of uh, p by 2 this gives p square by uh, oh, 2 c this should be divided by 2 c because the the f dash of uh, x is 2 x c so there is a c missing everywhere so divided by 2 c 2 c so this will be divided by 2 c uh, 2 c minus uh, f of p by 2 so instead of x we substitute p by 2 so c uh, p by 2 c I am sorry again so it will be c into p square by 4 c square this will c will get cancelled and the final result is p square by 4 c ok so this is the legendary transform of f of x equal to c x square now to verify the second property let us take the legendary transform of this function so uh, f star star of some q is maximizing with respect to p the function q p minus f star of p ok this would mean uh, our uh, p is equal to or our q uh, is equal to f star dash of p which implies p is equal to f star dash inverse of q ok but f star dash of p is equal to p by 2 c correct which implies that f star dash inverse of some y will be equal to 2c into y you can check it so this would mean this is equal to 2cq which means our f double star of q is now going to become uh, q into p is equal to 2cq 2cq minus f star of 2cq this is 2cq square minus I substitute 2cq instead of p in p square by uh, 4c so this will become 4c square q square by 4c so this will get cancelled this will get cancelled this will get cancelled this will get cancelled so the final answer is cq square changing the variable to x we see that this is equal to cx square and therefore this is equal to f of x which we initially started with so therefore taking the legendary transform of the legendary transform gives back the original function which is the second property which has been verified here okay so i hope that is clear next let us consider the some remarks okay so remarks so in in the properties that we discussed uh, the properties have been shown using functions with f double dash greater than 0 but what if f double dash was greater than or equal to 0 what happens when f double dash is equal to 0 if this is the case this would imply f dash inverse may not exist may not exist why we will see that with an example ok so because of this which we will see in the example the consequence is that for multiple values of x there is a single value of p this is the consequence how again we will see it with the our next example but before that i would like to make just one more statement what if what if f of x is convex but not 
differentiable differentiable what happens then okay so to understand these things let us consider the following example now this is just a qualitative example so and we are going to use the geometrical interpretation to solve this so our f of x will consist of two lines of this form and this is our curve okay so if i extend this it will intersect here and this is intersecting here okay so let's call this c1 and let's call this c2 and let the slope of this line be m1 and slope of this line be m2 okay then our legendary transform f star of p okay what will this look like so clearly here for all the x ranging from minus infinity up till this point say x not and for all the x going from x not to higher up we see that the slope is constant which means f dash of x is constant which implies f double dash of x is zero okay at all points except x not but this is still a convex function because if i draw any line the intersection uh, such that it intersects two points of the curve it always lies above the curve so this is a convex function okay but its f the second derivative is equal to 0 everywhere except at x not because at x not the derivative itself is not defined so how do we find the legendary transform for such a function so or how will it look we know that the legendary transform f star of p is nothing but geometrically speaking negative of the y intercept okay so here for the line 1 the y intercept is c1 and negative of that would fall somewhere over here okay so this will be minus c1 and for line 2 the uh, y intercept is c2 here and that will fall somewhere over here minus c2 okay also at this point i can draw infinitely many tangents one can be like this 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 and so on and all the possible tangents at this point will have slopes which vary from m1 to m2 okay so all tangents at x naught will have m which is less than m2 but greater than m1 so let us mark m1 and m2 okay so all the values of x corresponding to this region okay entire part of this curve there is only one tangent for this part and one tangent means it will have the slope m1 and intercept c1 so this tangent will correspond to the point minus c1 comma m1 so for many x values here there is a single value of uh, p okay corresponding to the particular slope and similarly for this line so we will have for that line the point over here so this point represents this entire line and this point represents this entire line and whatever the tangents that we can draw at this point which varies from m1 to m2 is going to consist of all the lines having all possible slopes and having intercepts between c1 and c2 okay so that is all all of these lines 
So all of these lines will have intercepts varying from C1 to C2 and slopes varying from M1 to M2. So all those tangents are represented by this line. Okay. <coughs> so the important thing to note that a point in uh, f of x okay has become line in f star of p so what i mean is the point over here has become this line over here and line in f of x becomes point in f star of p so these two points correspond to these two lines okay so that is what i wanted to convey here so even though f double dash of x becomes zero it doesn't mean that we cannot take the legendary transform we can take but the problem is that for many values of x we will have the same value of the legendary transform and this makes it uh, this doesn't have any ambiguity here because even by knowing just this information we will be able to reconstruct this function how because this particular point corresponds to this line and all of these points corresponds to these lines until over here which correspond to this line and the envelope for this is in fact equal to this particular function so therefore this will be the legendary transform okay so this is i hope you get intuitively what what will happen when f double dash of x becomes equal to 0 and uh, what happens when uh, the function is not differentiable at a point okay so the consequence of a function being not differentiable at the point will be that there can be multiple tangents drawn at the same point okay so f of x not differentiable differentiable implies multiple tangents can be drawn at the same point same point and this corresponds to a line in f star of p okay and here this corresponds to point in f star of p okay so i hope that it is clear now finally let us investigate what is what is going to happen what if what if f of x was was not convex not convex or concave because if it is concave again the legendary transform will be easy to find and the legendary transform will be concave also okay but if the function you can just think about it it is the same procedure as for convex but the only difference will be that there will be a change of sign from positive to neg uh, from negative to positive that's all okay i am not going to do that you can verify it by yourself if you have understood whatever whatever we did for convex it is straightforward for concave also by following similar steps but what if f of x was not concave, concave nor convex but it was some random curve okay so let me draw some random curve here f of x like this let it be something like this something like this okay then if you notice for this point we can draw a tangent in this manner and for this point we can again draw a tangent having the same slope okay so this is also having m this is also having m but they will have different intercepts what is the meaning of this this will imply this will imply f star of p will be multi valued multi valued okay so that means if i draw our f star of p 
versus p then corresponding to this m there are two values of c and again i can draw one more here in this fashion so this will give me c3 so three values it can be uh, i don't know so this c1 and c2 are positive here so here it will be negative so it will come somewhere over here and c2 is negative so it will be positive here so there are three values corresponding to the same m okay so this is the problem that we face when the function f of x is neither convex nor concave okay so in this case the curve i don't know i'm just drawing it for example it may look something like this okay this may not be exactly the curve which comes out from this but i'm saying that when the curve is of this kind of a shape f star of p is going to be multi valued it is not going to be a one one function okay so this will make it difficult when we take the inverse legendre uh, transform because now for a given value of p okay uh, uh, that is m okay we don't know which one to choose for f uh, for the y coordinate in this particular case so how do we overcome this so to overcome this overcome this we need to take the legendre transform piece wise okay piece wise so what i mean by that is uh, piece wise uh, separately uh, means piece wise such that we consider convex and concave parts separately okay so if you want to get this curve from here like this then we should first divide this particular curve into sections where each section is either purely concave or purely convex and after that in those sections we take the legendre transform individually and draw the corresponding curve in the f star of p versus p plane okay so that is how we will have to proceed if our f of x was not uh, concave or convex now before i end this video i want to make a statement that the legendre transform that has been formulated in the uh, past three or four lectures is not completely uh, rigorous okay so if we want to go deep into this there is much more to it than what we have discussed but for our use in physics at least in graduate level whatever we have studied so far is more than enough and having said that i am going to end this video and um in the next video we are going to see how to apply legendre transform to differentials okay so thank you for watching see you next time